Hello and welcome to this tutorial on Localize. In this video we are going to discuss how JSON files are organized and how to edit and translate those easily. So first of all let's cover the JSON format in general. And this is a data interchange format that was introduced in early 2000s. And since then it has gained quite a lot of traction beating other formats like XML or CSV and others. Well it's so popular because it is really simple. Let's take a look at the following sample right here. So this is a basic JSON file and it contains some textual values. So all JSON files are structured in the key value format with the strings to the left being the keys and these blue things to the right those are your values. A JSON format is used for many purposes but in this tutorial we will concentrate on storing translation keys and values within those files. Translation keys are specified in the application source code and when the application is served to the user they are replaced with the corresponding translation values based on the requested language. So here is a sample taken from the view framework that shows the usage of translation keys. So T here is the method for performing translations and when the user browses the page they won't see this home key, they will be presented with the corresponding translation which is the home page in our case, as you can see here. While this format is quite simple, there are some things that you should keep in mind when working with these files. So let's summarize some key points. First of all, JSON can represent four primitive types. Those are strings, numbers, booleans and nulls, as well as two structured types, which are objects and arrays. So let's take a look at a more complex example of a JSON file. As you can see, JSON files are always opened and closed with those curly brackets. Keys are always represented as strings, and these must be wrapped with double quotation marks, as you can see here. So the key value pairs are always separated with commas, but there is no trailing comma as you can see. These JSON files must be encoded in UTF-8. Also boolean and null literals must be written in lowercase without any quotation marks as well as your numbers as you can see here. And there are multiple types of JSON files. The first type is called the nested JSON file. So this is basically a simple JSON file that can contain nested values as you can see here. So we can have a parent key and we can have some child keys written in the following way. And basically the level of nesting is not limited in this case. The second type is called a flat JSON. And in contrast to nested JSON, it doesn't allow any nesting at all. And the namespaces are provided as prefixes, as you can see right here. And finally, the third type is called a structured JSON. And it means that we can have a parent key and some child keys. And the structured JSON files are typically used to store translations. So, for example, here you can see the actual translation key, then some notes, maybe for the translator. And also we can provide some additional metadata like maybe the maximum limit for this translation text or something like that. But it's important to mention that you can have only a single level of nesting inside structured JSONs. So if you would like to represent uh, some additional level of nesting, please use uh, the following prefix. In other words, you cannot do something like that. Right, because of that is going to be additional level of nesting, which is not supported. Now, what about placeholders? Because after all, when storing your translations within JSON files, you will often need to provide placeholders, right? 
For example, if you would like to greet your user, you might say something like welcome and then the username. But the problem is that JSON is a general purpose format and it leads to well a confusion because different technologies and different libraries require placeholders in different formats. And here are some typical examples that you might encounter. So at the end of the day, you will need to study the docs for the internationalization tool that you are currently using to understand how your placeholders must be specified. Now the next question is, how do I perform pluralization? Because in many cases your messages must be pluralized because maybe you can say one apple or multiple apples. The situation is quite similar to placeholders. The general standard for JSON doesn't really say how we should provide the pluralized strings. And so there are four main ways, actually. And in my opinion, the simplest and maybe the most convenient way is by using the nested keys. So you have the translation key and then you provide the so-called plural forms right here. So specifically you say one and other. Well, that's going to be for English. For other languages, you might need to provide more plural forms. And that's going to be our actual placeholder right here. The second way of writing plurals is by providing the postfixes. So these postfixes are basically your plural forms. The overall approach is quite similar to what we have seen here. The third way is by separating your plural forms with some kind of a separator, maybe with this pipe line in the following way. So you have two plural forms, but those are written under a single translation key. I don't think this form of writing is really convenient, but well, in some technologies you might encounter that. And finally, you might see something like that, my friend. And this is called an ICU format, which is basically an international components for Unicode. And this is an ICU expression right here. So it starts with this curly bracket, then we say that the count is basically the variable, it is some kind of a number, then you say that the plural is your ICU expression, and then you provide the one plural form, and here is the corresponding translation with the placeholder, right? And then you can provide the other plural form with the corresponding translation and the placeholder. So these expressions are typically utilized by solutions like get text. So now the question is how do we work with those translation files and how we can uh, modify those, how we can provide support for additional languages, translate those, etc. Maybe let's suppose that I have the following translation file or the English locale and I would like to translate it into French, maybe in Latvian, for instance. And so how do you achieve that? Well, meet localize which is a translation management system that is here to save the day. First of all, proceed to try it for free. So you basically don't need any credit card or anything like that. You just provide your email, your name, your password. After you confirm your email, you will see a page looking like this. If you have an existing team, you can join it. If you don't have any team, you can create a new one. So let's hit create. And then just follow the wizard's instructions for for instance, let's give our project the name JSON. Pick the English language because this is going to be the base language. This is the language we are translating from, right? And then as for the target languages, in my case, this is going to be French and Latvian. Let's click continue. Well, as for this, you can skip it. We don't need to create any translation keys manually pick any platform, it doesn't really matter, and click get started. So of course you can follow the wizard's instructions or you can simply hit editor and you will be presented with the localized editor right here. Well, let's get rid of this key because it's like a demonstration key, right? And we are going to upload our JSON file to localize. And so to achieve that, you proceed to the upload page. And then hit select a file. Pick one or multiple JSON files and then Localize will try to determine the language of this file. Also, you can see the number of keys and words. So everything is great. And then here to the right, you can enable additional options. Well, this can be basically left to the default values. But well, one option that I would recommend enabling 
is this one but only if you are actually using some placeholders within your uh, translation files after all you might need to export these translations in other formats not in json but maybe i don't know in xml right and so to properly handle those placeholders you can use uh, the universal version of these placeholders so i would recommend enabling this option if you are using icu expressions then also tick this option and then hit import once this task is completed, please proceed to the editor and you are going to see all your translation keys in the following way. The English translations are already populated. You can simply hit on this French text. You can add a placeholder here and you can provide a translation manually or you can use machine translation suggestions or you can even translate with the AI. Proceed to the next key and say, I don't know, please translate it for me. Then you can see this suggestion or you can ask for more variants. Why not? And pick one of those. And so once you're ready, you just hit save. By the way, the placeholders will be displayed with those small blocks. If you don't like that, just tick display placeholders as blocks and you will see those placeholders in the row format. So once again, those are universal placeholders, but don't worry, they will be replaced with the platform specific ones when you are going to download your translations back. Also note that your plural keys are displayed in this way. So you will see the plural forms on the per language basis, because for instance, in Latvian, you have three plural forms, not two. Also, by the way, you can take advantage of the Google Translate empty values. So all the translations for this key that are currently empty will be translated by Google for you. So check it out really nice but well if you have many translation keys of course it's not really convenient to press this button multiple times so instead you can navigate to the order page and you can create a new translation order and here you can pick one of the translation providers if you are looking for a machine translation you can pick either google translate or deep l then you pick the project the source language the target languages you can add all languages right here you can pick the untranslated strings machine translation and here to the right you're going to see your order summaries you can see it's really really cheap if you are looking for a human translation then in this case you can pick either Giango or localize so you can learn more in our docs about those providers in case of localize translators will work right inside the localized platform in case of Giango, they will work outside of Localize, so you can pick the one that suits you. So typically, Giango orders are somewhat cheaper than Localize, but at Localize, we provide lifetime guarantee for those translations. Okay, so once you are ready, you can return to the dashboard, to your project, and now let's see how we can download our translation files. To achieve that, you can proceed to the download page. Then pick the format from the dropdown, so we have lots and lots of formats. And then pick the languages to include into the export. So this is like the progress, the translation progress, right? As for the file structure, you typically can leave it be unless you have some specific requirements. Then as for the content to export, you can pick only the translated strings, maybe for instance, or you can pick all the data, you can filter by tags, etc. Under the advanced settings, you can choose to replace line breaks with this backslash n. You can choose the sorting options, the plural form, the placeholder, format so those are some technical stuff that you might want to tinker with but it is not really mandatory once you're ready you can preview the results so hit on this button and you can see that here you go so those are your translation files maybe uh, let's suppose i don't like this placeholder written in the following way so instead let's pick i don't know iit9 maybe and you can see that the placeholder is now replaced with those curly brackets and it is identical to what I had initially. And here on top, I can switch between the language versions and everything is working great. Then simply click build and download. You will see the archive. So this is a zip archive for you. You can open it and then your translations will be separated in different folders. You can open one of the files 
and check it out so well your translations are right here and so basically this is it for today uh, you can of course study other features of localize by using our free videos blog posts also you can check out our academy where you can learn even more about localize and the process of internationalization in general thank you for staying with me today and see you in other videos